All right, everybody, welcome back to a special episode of the London is Blue podcast. Uh, new room, new us, and we're with Jimmy Floyd Housebank. How's it going? Good, good. Thank you for having me. It's been, uh, yeah, really good few days, hanging out with, uh, with Chelsea, with the players, and, and obviously seeing you guys. Yeah, well, USA tour, first time in the States? No, not first time in the States, first time in, in Washington, uh, first time in Philly, and also, it was the first time in Atlanta. Okay. Um, do you vacation here? What's your go-to? Yeah, normally we go as a family. We go to uh, uh, Miami, Miami Beach. Mm. Uh, we hang out there with the girls, uh, with my girls uh, at Miami Beach. And then from there, normally we fly then to the Caribbean, to Anguilla or mm. somewhere else. Uh, I've been in New York. Uh, I've been in Miami and I've been in Vegas. <laughs> well, we won't talk about Vegas, but maybe we'll ask, how are you enjoying Chelsea Summer Tour so far? And maybe what are you seeing just in terms of the vibe of the, the team and the players? How's everything coalescing? Uh, I'm enjoying it very much. Uh, I think uh, there is a lot of excitement going on at, at, at Chelsea at the moment. They've got a very young, energetic team at the moment. Mm -hmm. A lot of talent, a lot of talent. I must say, out of all the um, Premier League clubs, uh, Chelsea has done the best business until now with getting players out, mm -hmm. um, clearing, uh, you know, uh, a few out, and, and getting the uh, the squad smaller and more compact and more quality. I'm, I'm not saying that they are done yet mm -hmm. with getting more players out and bringing more players in, but it's shaping up really, really well. Uh, the last two, three matches, how they played, you can see what Pochettino is trying to do. They look as a team. Don't get me wrong, they're not the finished article by far, but at least you see a structure. You see a compact structure. You see where the team, how they move, and, and you're seeing patterns. Um, we are a little bit more energetic, uh, we press a little bit better, we look also a lot fitter. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that aspect, it's, it's, uh, it's a very exciting time for, for Chelsea. Jimmy, I'm going to go off script a little bit. You've played in big squads and small squads. What's the benefit of being in a, in a smaller, tight-knit squad, especially during the Premier League season? I think when you are when you are in a smaller squad, it's it's more togetherness. You know, um, there is still competitiveness between you and, and and fighting for your place because only eleven can play. But when you have a tighter unit, majority of the time you are um, you're stronger. Um, it's like less is more. You know. Um, when you when you have a big squad, everybody wants to um, obviously everybody wants to play, but everybody can't play. And when you have got too many people out for a manager, it's it's so much harder to um, to, to to manage. You can't keep everybody happy, but yeah. <laughs> but a manager really doesn't want to keep everybody happy. You want that balance to be right, but you cannot have 11 player playing and 20 sitting out. That is just, it's for the, for the, for the team morale, it's not good. And, and at the end of the day, they are all human and they are all going to complain. Mm -hmm. And you don't want that bad negativity in the team, you know, uh, team ethics are the most important thing. Well, when players are so competitive, if there's only two in every position, you know you're going to get your minutes, right? Where if there's three, four, that's where the, the, the pain comes in. Yeah, yeah. Normally, that's how you majority put a team together, two in a, in a position. And then of that 24 players, uh, the two in the position, certain players should be able to cover more than one position because sometimes you get two players who are injured at the same time in the same position. So, so uh, 
but normally you're spot on. You want 23, 24 players, you know, in a squad, competitive. And actually this year, Chelsea can get away with, because they're not in Europe, they're not in Champions League, they can get away with maybe 16 really good competitive players that can play yeah uh, uh, and 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 the level won't drop mm -hmm. and they can have then four or five younger ones that are topping that up you know uh, because you you're going to have in this season more time between games exactly it's, it's not going to be saturday wednesday saturday it's going to be saturday saturday so you can you can recover a lot more, so you don't really need that volume of, 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 of players that much. You talked about the young players that Chelsea have and the excitement that's going on with Chelsea right now. I think as someone who's won the Golden Boot twice in the Premier League, Nico Jackson is someone who is very much exciting Chelsea players. From a striker's perspective, what are you seeing in his game that is already there and ready, and yeah. where is he going to have to improve this season? Well, it, 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 he's exciting. He's an exciting player. Uh, he's coming, and uh, you can see that he's ready to prove himself. Mm -hmm. uh, he's put himself about. Uh, he held his own against Newcastle, and Newcastle is a very good team. Yeah. Uh, bit physical back there. Bit physical, yeah. But he surprised me in that sense, mm -hmm. you know, because the game in Spain is not physical at all. Yeah, when you make it physical, you get free kicks against. Uh, a lot, so um, he's not shy of the of the physical aspect. What is a plus? Um, I I think I think he can grow in 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 the in, in the work rate and and um, and um, the 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 transition. He's very calm in front of the goal. What is a big plus? Yeah, and he. What I like, he plays with that swagger, mm -hmm. you know? He plays with uh, a good chip on his shoulder. And that, that is good to have, you know? Uh, um, at least now, we have a number nine, you know? Mm -hmm. um, look, uh, it's still early. Mm -hmm. We still have to see how he's going to do and how, if he can maintain that. that we all know that he can play the level, mm -hmm. yeah? And we all know that he can play and he can produce one match. But it's now for him, can I sustain that and, and, and have that in the whole season? You know, that is, that is, that is the hardest part. Mm -hmm. uh, have, that, uh, have that for the whole season. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, he's new, but until now, what I've seen, it's very encouraging. Very encouraging. Let's talk about an entire Premier League season, right? As we are kind of exiting preseason here in a little bit. What challenges is he going to face as a number nine in the Premier League that may not be the same as we're, as we're seeing in preseason? What is he going to be up against that he's going to need to overcome? First of all, what will help him is that they're not in Europe at the moment. So he will have games Saturday to Saturday, so he can recover a little bit more. Now, Premier League is relentless. It's relentless, honestly. And it goes fast. The games, they, 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 they are high tempo. Properly high tempo. But again, it's Saturday to Saturday. So, he will have a lot of time to recover. Um, it's also the best league in the world. Mm -hmm. The best players. Uh, the best coaches. Um, the toughest to score. Uh, it's also uh, the hardest. It's 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 competitive. It's physical. Uh, it, all that comes together, you know. So, and it's not only your ability. It's also the mental aspect mm -hmm. of, of it, you know. Uh, and and what I do like of him, he's not faced at the moment. He is is uh, feasible, you know. So. And, and that's a good aspect to have, really good aspect to have. 
What so, What do you think about the partnership that could evolve with him and Christopher and Kunku too? Because he's another one that I think yeah. players are players, fans, everyone seems to be very excited about his joining up with the team too. I I I love Kunku. I think he's a very smart player. I think he's a very technical player. I think he's he, he he's not an out and out number nine, but he can play as a nine. Um, I think you will see them both on the pitch quite, quite, quite a lot. I think they like playing again, uh, with each other, and that's a big plus. Um, again, he's very calm in front of the goal. Um, very intelligent, knows the spaces between the lines and stuff. Uh, we need to look for him. We need to look for him. We need to give him the ball, if, especially in the final third, because he he, he makes things happen. You know, so um, yeah, very excited. At least now we have got goals in our game, yeah. But we need to provide them with chances. Mm -hmm. If we provide those two players with chances, they will score goals. Yeah. So um, and Kuku is, is is a big, 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 big signing. You know, French national, international. Mm -hmm. um, it's the next step for him as well, coming from Leipzig has played Champions League football, um, so um, he will be one of the leaders, I think, in, 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 in the team. So, you've been a player and manager. You kind of know what it takes to impress and how to balance a player. Ian Matson. Yeah. Your countryman. Yeah. What, how do you see this playing out with him? He's shown amazing versatility. We have a left back scoring goals and assists as an atta wide attacker. Um, what kind of an impression has he made, do you think, on Pochettino, who's looking, I've got Ben Chilwell, I've got Cucurella, and I've got Ian Motson. What do I do with this group of three? Yeah, look, uh, Motson has been, he's, he's coming and he's been a fresh up bird there, you know? Uh, um, and just really has taken taking it to the coach. And that's what a coach wants, you know? He's expressed himself in the right way. Yes, he's a left back, but I'm not surprised that he scores goals and, and, and that he uh, provides goals because he's a very attacking left back. Majority of the time he plays in the final third. He doesn't defend that much because last year he played with Burnley. They were really uh, attack-minded. They were always in the in, in the opposition half. So he's learning how to provide chances and score goals. Uh, and, and the same with, with, with Chelsea. He's been actually playing in pre-season. He's been playing in midfield. And um, he's got the stamina to go up and down. And, and, and it gives the midfield a little bit more balance as well. You know, so uh, what do... What, what, what is, Chelsea going to do? I don't know with him, you know, because you don't want to have three left backs, um, um, you know, on, on the books really. So I know that Burnley is, is, is in for him, they want to buy him, but then on the other hand, he is a solid citizen mm -hmm. in the squad, you know, so um, I don't know. I, I, I like him. I, I like him. I, I, I think he's versatile, very versatile. I wouldn't want to see him go, but, you know, and to, and to, the, the, the thing is, it's uh, is business, isn't it? Yeah, I, I guess as a player, you've kind of worked under a lot of different managers. Kind of reframe this for, for Poch. How did you, I guess, take on the challenge of impressing a new manager and, and what did you do to, to kind of make that transition better? Because all these guys are going through that process right now. Yeah, well, you want to be noticed, don't you? Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, if you have uh, training, you want to be the best. And that brings the level up of everybody. So, so uh, if it is a ro running session, you, going to be, you want to be first or in the, in, in the top group. If it, if it is uh, small-sided games, you want to be showing your, your, your versatility and, and, and you want to see, you want to show that, that, that you're the man, goals, you know? Um, 
is if it is matches preseason matches, you want to you want to play well, you know, and and show that you deserve to be in the team and and that you're ready for the challenge. And but that also that you're a team player, you know, and you you can take in information that the manager has given you and a specific you can do a specific job, you know, for the team. So all these things are in, in, important. So. Um, I think I think he's getting that. I think he's getting that. I think you know uh, against Newcastle they played uh, a good game and you saw a lot of good things. Yeah, you saw mistakes as well, but it always happens in 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 preseason. But uh, you saw things coming back that they have worked on in training, and that's what it is about, you know. And now can you maintain that for 90, 95 minutes? You know, that's going to be the next challenge in the next few matches. One of the things that uh, Poch has to do between now and the start of the season is name a captain, vice captain for the side. We've seen players like Ben Chilwell come out in recent interviews that he would be happy to be a captain. We know that Reese James is someone to be interested. Thiago Silva is just a, an absolute ambassador of the game. How, how fortunate is Pochettino to have that type of grouping of players to choose from to help lead the side? And like, where, what type of qualities do you see in them, you know, kind of observing them? Yeah, obviously uh, I know Chilwell and, and uh, Rhys James a little bit better because I, I, I get them in the, in the England national team. Sure. Uh, I know what kind of characters they are um, and, and they are good characters. They love the club. They want to uh, lead. <laughs> Um, so that's a good aspect to have. We obviously know Thiago Silva, what kind of player he is, and, what, and everybody looks up to him. Mm -hmm. So I, I would think that he would be normally the captain. But if he doesn't play, then it will be Reese or, 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 or Chill or Ben. Um, Reese is, is somebody with exceptionally talent. Uh, he's going to. Uh, to a, to, a, to a very important season this year where he has to stay fit. He needs to do more on his fitness that he, you know, doesn't get injured. He needs 25, 30 matches in a row to play. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, I don't know what the problem is, why he's getting injured here and there, but he needs to sort it out with the medical staff. And if he does that and gets his best form, He's going to be a hell of a player for Chelsea, mm -hmm. a hell of a player. Uh, he, as a right back, can do things uh, that you can't see other right backs do. And for a striker, as, as, as I was, you know, to have a full back coming up and, and providing opportunities for you, it's, it's, it's vital, you know, especially in the team. And that's the same with, with, with Ben Chilwell on the left. Uh, different kind of players, mm -hmm. different kind of players, but. Um, yeah, they're going to be ever so important for the for the team. Final question: Liverpool coming up, the first match of the season. You had a couple of bouts with them as well. Any specific memories from playing Liverpool that uh, maybe were uh, were positive inflection points for you? Yeah, actually, the biggest memory. Well, the two biggest memories were um, first of all, uh, I think it was season two thousand three that we played the last game of Final the game. season yep. uh, against, against Liverpool and we, we, we were not allowed to lose. We should have draw, we, we could draw or win. We won the game to be in the Champions League and if we would have lost it, they would be in the Champions League. But uh, early on, we were losing 1-0 mm -hmm. and then uh, Marcel Desailly scored, who actually never scored. <laughs> Good time. And, and yeah, exactly. And he was so surprised that he scored. <laughs> and Jasper Gronke scored mm -hmm. a wonder goal. And I think we won, I think 2 1 or 3 1, we won. Uh, so we were in the Champions League. And then, and then the year after, that was the year after, uh, uh, that was the year that Abramovich came in. Um, and Ranieri put me on the bench, first game of the season, I think. First game of the season in 2003-2004, that was my last season. 20 years ago now. Yeah, yeah. he put me on the bench and um, I was so angry. I was so disappointed. Um, and I think we were losing 1-0. Um, and then uh, I think 
Veron scored 1-1. And then the last 10, 15 minutes he put me on and I scored the win at 2-1. And all the anger and all the frustration <laughs> came out, and I took my shirt off, and uh, like uh, a lot of words were said. <laughs> and I cannot say no. <laughs> no, you know. So, uh, so yeah, but that, that, uh, those were good memories. I love it. Obviously, it's so fun to get to have you guys stateside here in the United States. Hopefully, we're bringing as many fans as we can. Love that you're still part of the club and doing great stuff. So, Jimmy, thank you so much. It was fun talking to you. Thank and have you a great me. rest of the tour. Thank you, man. Thank you.